Hey guys, today I want to talk about six albums that changed my life. I'll see you inside the video. Hey guys, it's James here from eBay's Guitar, and you may have already noticed this video is a little bit different. The guitar is down on the stand, and I want to talk about music that changed my life today. So I've had the immense privilege of building a new eBay's Guitar HQ from scratch over the last six months. So in a few weeks time, we're gonna release a video showing you the studio build, but we're just at the final stages now where I've been looking at the finer details of the decoration and the vibe that I wanna create for the eBay's Guitar YouTube videos. And I really wanted to put decoration pictures on the wall that really meant something to me. So it all started with these two pictures here, Phil Collins and Norman Watroyd, the great bass player from Ian Jury and the Blockheads. Now these were taken by a fabulous photographer and e-bass guitar student, Martin Evening. Sadly, he lost his battle to prostate cancer earlier this year and a few months before he died, he sent me these pictures. So I've got them up on the wall in his memory and I really, really will treasure them forever because he made some extraordinary progress using the material over at ebassguitar.com. So it then led the question, what else should I put up? So I decided that I wanted to put six albums that changed my life up on the wall. So these are six albums that I've tracked from my musical evolution from the age of eight through to 16, which really shaped everything since. Now, over the last few weeks, I went on holiday and I listened to these six albums back to back to revisit it. Some of them I haven't listened to in 30 years. And the really curious thing is I can see why they've shaped me as a musician and why they were such a strong influence. So today I'm gonna to go through each of these six albums and tell you why I chose them. Now, I would love to find out what six albums changed your life. Please do let me know in the comments below. Also, I'd love to ask you if you're not already subscribed to the eBay's Guitar YouTube channel, please can you hit the red subscribe button. If you watch this channel on a regular basis, it will really help us grow the reach so we can reach more bass students. And what that means for you guys is we can put more great free bass educational content out there. So please hit that red subscribe button. Also, one last thing. Sadly, we're not gonna play any music in this video because the YouTube copyright police are at an all time high. And it will probably mean this video will get eventually blocked, particularly when there's some seminal albums in there. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna link to a specific track from what each of these albums below so you can check this out. So please do check out those links in the description below. So album number one, The Beatles, Sgt. Pepper. Now, how did this come about? This has a really, really personal story to me. Back in 1989, in the town where I lived, Berkhamsted, Hertfordshire, England, a group of local amateur musicians decided to recreate the Sgt. Pepper album from beginning to end in aid of local charities. They used some fabulous local musicians, but also youth theatres and local schools to recreate some of these songs. I was fortunate enough to be in the local youth theatre, so part took in this show. This show started off really tiny and just grew and grew and grew. To this day, it's still going on 30 years later. It's extraordinary and really was a huge part of me as a musician and discovering the world of music. And as a result, aged eight or possibly nine, I listened to this album continuously. I heard it on vinyl and I also heard it live too for three performances and it blew my mind. So listening to this again after 30 years, I think this album is extraordinary. McCartney is absolutely brilliant on bass. Now, in terms of the bass players that came afterwards, he's not flash with lots and lots of pyrotechnics, but he is equally brilliant. And this is why I think McCartney is so, so good. The first reason is he is a multi-instrumentalist. This means his bass lines are influenced by the fact that he can play so many instruments and sing. He also spent hours upon hours in the trenches. So he used to do night after night in Hamburg. So whilst he perhaps didn't do his 10,000 hours practicing the bass, he certainly did it playing music. 
The last reason I think McCartney is just brilliant is he's a workhorse. If you watch the Get Back documentary where you see McCartney really in action, he is a powerhouse. He is a workhorse. And the lines on this album you can just hear are so, so well crafted. And that's why I think he will always be one of the seminal bass players that we need to take notice of. So the song I would love you to check out on this record is For the Benefit of Mr. Kite. This is the song that I sung with the youth theatre in the show, but particularly listen to McCartney's bass lines because it strikes me he's thinking like a tuba player. The bass lines are so melodic, so articulated, and so inspired from so many different genres of music. It's a real joy to listen to. So the next album that blew my mind is this, The Seeds of Love by Tears for Fears. Now, there's a really personal story behind this. In the late 80s, when I was eight or nine years old, my mum used to take me on day trips to the BBC studios so we could look around and hang out. She used to work there in the 70s and still had friends there. So we'd go and have lunch and we'd also go and look at the TV shows being rehearsed or recorded. We'd go up in the gallery, look around. Once I got to play with the lights on top of the pops, which was a mind blowing experience. But there was this one time we were sitting in the audience and a band was rehearsing, they were rehearsing the cameras, and it was Tears for Fears. And I remember saying to my mum very loudly, because I was super, super into the drums at that point, that was in my drumming days before I played bass and guitar, and I said, look, it's a left-handed drummer. And the person in the row in front of us started talking to us. It was the drummer's girlfriend. And then we got to know a little bit about the band, and we discovered this album. I still don't know to this day who the left-handed drummer was, so if any of you guys know, do let me know in the description or the comments below. But it led me to discover this album. Now a couple of years back I rediscovered this album and I looked at the personnel inside and it's no wonder that I loved it. Manu Cache on drums, Phil Collins on drums, Simon Phillips who did so many great stuff with Toto, then onto bass, Pino Palladino, and then Robbie McIntosh on guitar, the great guy that played with Paul McCartney in the 80s and early 90s, and also with John Mayer recently. It is like an A-list all-star band on this, and it sounds fantastic. And the track that I really love, and I'd love you to check out on here, is Woman in Chains. Phil Collins did the drum session and there's a story where they really wanted that iconic Phil Collins drum sound that was going along in the 80s. And towards the end, three quarters of the way through, they wanted a drum fill, one of the big Phil Collins drum fills. I think what they were really after was in the air tonight. But Phil Collins did his own version of that fill there and it's just iconic. It just sounds magnificent. So track that track out. There's a link in the description below for Woman in Chains. So let's move on to album number three. Now there's something really important to point out here. These first two albums up here, I was playing the drums as an eight, nine, ten year old. But there was a point when I suddenly fell in love with the guitar. And this was one of the albums that enabled me to do so. Now this has the great Nuno Betancourt on guitar. Now I remember with my friends being a little bit of an outlier because age 10, 11, 12, 13, we'd all started playing guitar, a load of my friends had. And they were into Guns N' Roses and Metallica, Nirvana, and all those kind of acts that were around at that point. But I loved this album, Nuno Betancourt. The artistry in his guitar work just absolutely blew me away. And listening to it 20, 30 years later, I can see exactly why. Now the song I would love you to check out from this album is Get The Funk Out. Now for me, revisiting this album many years later, I can see exactly why this was so pivotal. Because a few years later, when I was 17, 18 years old, I was gonna fall in love with the groove and playing the bass. And the groove in this track is unbelievable. The bass and drums with Pat Badger on bass are just rock solid and so, so funky. And then you've got Nuno Betancourt's just extraordinary artistry on top. Just makes it an absolutely magical track. If you haven't checked this album out, do, because you're gonna witness some unbelievable musicianship. Let's move on to album number four. This is Gary Moore, Still Got The Blues. Now between Extreme Porno Graffiti and Gary Moore, Still Got The Blues, there was one music teacher I had that was absolutely pivotal. And this shows how important 
teachers and mentors are in this world. And this was a guy called Nick Bowers Broadbent, or Mr. Bowers Broadbent as we called it then. I went to quite a traditional school and music at school was largely classical music. He was a young teacher at the time and played guitar as well as a ton of other instruments and brought his electric guitar. And I still remember that music lesson where he had his Mesa Boogie preamp there and his Charvel Jackson guitar there and started playing with a load of distortion and it blew my mind. And he introduced me to this album, but crucially also this album here, Still Got the Blues. And I fell in love with Gary Moore's playing at this point. I think the pivotal thing for me in this record is I discovered the blues. I discovered real emotion from really quiet, sparse music through to this ripping rock blues guitar, which Gary Moore is a master of. And that incredible sound with his Les Paul and Soldando amplifier, it blew my mind at that point. So the track that I would love you to check out is Still Got the Blues, the title track from the album. Also, check out the wonderful bass work of a great British bass player called Andy Pyle, who just definitely doesn't get enough credit and recognition. So check out Still Got the Blues. So album number five, you guessed it from that iconic album cover. It is Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd. So when I was about 15 to 16 years old, I got into Pink Floyd in a massive way. Really, the album which I listened to endlessly, apart from Dark Side of the Moon, was the live album, The Division Bell. There was a video, a VHS that was out of them playing at Earl's Court in London, which was just unbelievable. The light show, the big rock and roll elements of it, with just something that made me fall in love with this band. So as you might have guessed it, as a 15 year old boy discovering the world, perhaps with some extracurricular activities, should we say as well, this album here was really pivotal. I just remember staying up all night listening to Pink Floyd, particularly this album here. It made such a huge impact on me. I remember going and seeing Pink Floyd tribute bands because we just missed that 1993 tour. And so, this made a huge impact on me. So the track I would love you to check out, well, there are two. For me, the one that emotionally just pulls me every single time is Great Gig in the Sky with that wonderful vocals on there. But also for us bass players, it has to be money, that incredible Roger Waters bass line. Now, the last album here, you guessed it. This was my final descent or perhaps ascent, depending how you look at it, into the world of bass guitar. I started off on drums, then started playing guitar and then discovered the groove. And this album was absolutely pivotal in doing that. So I was 16 years old, I was at boarding school and I can remember it so clearly. I was reading the Jaco Pastorius biography. I think I was with a torch after lights out reading about this incredible bass player and it came with a CD with it. Now, my influence where I heard of Jaco Pastorius was via my dad. He was a massive, massive Weather Report fan. And he used to tell me stories of seeing Weather Report at the Hammersmith Odeon, and it was just like a million watts, he would say. And it was what jazz had become. And he's like, you've got to check this out. So I imagine it was him who bought me the book. It came with a CD with a few tracks, and it was like, what on earth is this? And then it led me on to buying this album and my mind just opened. At this point, I discovered what the bass guitar could do. It starts off with Donna Lee. I never heard anybody playing bebop bass or bebop lines on the bass guitar. Then into Come On, Come Over, that extraordinary 16 note funk, and then Continuum, where you hear those wonderful, wonderful uh, harmonics on there. And then just some of the orchestrations and the interplay between the instruments through the rest of the album was just stuff that I'd never ever heard before. Now there's still elements of this album, even to this day, that I find quite challenging to listen to, sort of pushed my musical envelope, but crucially showed me what was possible. But I can also hear what I love, which is a groove. I love the job of a bass player doing exactly what you would expect of a bass player, playing incredible bass lines. So the track for me, which will still always be my favorite on this, is Come On Up, Come Over with Sam and Dave on it, where he's playing those wonderful 16th note funk lines. It's what started to lead me into bands like Tower of Power and Earth, Wind and Fire and all of that kind of good stuff.
So naturally the track I would love you to check out and really explore is Come On, Come Over. It's track two on this album. We'll put a link in the description below it. So there you have it. Those are the six albums that changed my life. But there's one thread that I can see running through all of these albums, which is synonymous to me as a musician, is I love music that crosses genres, which has different influences. And you can hear that all the way from Sgt. Pepper through to the Jaco Pastorius album. So at the beginning, I said, if I was stranded on a desert island that, and I could only take one album, which one would it be? So that album, and it might surprise you, is this one here. Tears for Fears, The Seeds of Love. This has everything for me. Wonderful songwriting, wonderful musicianship, the fusion of different styles of music as well. I just love this album. So please, if you don't know it, check it out. So that's it for now. We'll give you a video tour of the new eBay's Guitar HQ over the coming weeks. So please do look forward to that. Also, let me know the six albums that changed your life in the comments below. So I've been James from eBay's Guitar and I will catch you next time. Thank you for watching.